see you, Mallory. Did you get to go on one of the adventures and see the neighborhood? Unfortunately, I did not. I think the uh, contact information came a little too late for um, for what is it, the Friday group? <laughs> Got it. How about yourself? Did it all come together? I was out of town this weekend, so <laughs> I was gonna tap in kind of late and listen to notes. So, um, be interested to see what we we'll learn. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It'll be a good meeting, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hang on a second. Let me, my window just is, it's just too bright. <laughs> Hopefully, that will be better. Ah, yes. <laughs> Somewhat better. All right. Um, Eric, did you say you grew up in Murray? I did. When, like, did you go to Murray High? I did. When did you graduate Murray High? 97. Okay. I was like, Kenny, who do I, because I, I went to Murray High too, so. What year did you graduate? Oh, four. Oh, four. Well, my sister, God, when did she graduate? Oh, two, I think. So, um, mm -hmm. Aaron Kenny, she, so she would have been a senior when you would have been a sophomore. So too cool. I wouldn't yeah. have known. <laughs> <laughs> she, she is she is definitely nothing if not not cool. <laughs> <laughs> she has never been cool a day in her life. So <laughs> she's presently home with a having had foot surgery this week. They had to like reconstruct her foot. Yikes. Oh, so, all right. Um, are we, um, Ben, are we all here that I can call us to order? We have a quorum? Ben is not here yet. Oh, he's actually here. Ben is here, but can he's on mute. Can you hear me now? Yes, there you are. <laughs> okay, my WebEx decided to update itself. Because apparently it's more powerful than I am, so uh -huh. sorry to be late. <laughs> <laughs> so how many of us are there? There's three, four. Um, I think we lost Marty. Yes. And, and I know Eric's not going to be here, so, um, and then Daniel isn't here. Do we know who else is not going to be here besides um, Eric Lopez? Um, I know Ann Cannon is planning to join. Okay. Okay, so we have one, two, three. I think we have five of us now. I'm here, I'm here. Welcome back, welcome. I'm having <laughs> weird WebEx issues myself. <laughs> Okay, um, having a quorum, I'll go ahead and call us to order. Um, 
It does not appear that we have anybody from the public here. Um, is that correct? City folk? That is correct. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and approve the minutes from March 17th and March 24th. Do we have any um, any changes on those? Okay. Um, so do we approve the minutes as presented for March 17th and March 24th? Put your thumb up. Yes, no, whatever. Yes. Okay. Unanimous minutes are approved. Thank you, everyone. Um, okay, so reports of working groups. So Euclid and Fair Park neighbor, neighborhood visits and report and discussion. Um, did those happen? I sent out an email. I don't know if everyone saw it with some kind of like places and points of interest for the west side to go see and visit. I'm not sure if anyone was able to do that. The weekend kind of got away from me. Yeah, uh, did me too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Somehow it was 75 degrees and I was like, I was like, nothing, inter nothing electronic exists for me right now. <laughs> So I think if people weren't able to look over that email or if it didn't make sense, um, you could probably, we still have a few days that we could do that, right? I mean, I'm still planning to do a map. I just haven't. Okay. Second. So um, I think there might be a minute to still go and see and then um, let us know if you have questions. Yeah. Did you send that to me, Marty? I'm I don't know that I got it. Yeah, let's see. Sorry. Or resend if I did something weird to my email. Did everyone does anyone here not have that email? Just so I can make it's because the email the email in that in the list of emails, I have two L's. Uh, so that's another Mallory Bateman got that informative email, but I did not. And they did not let me know. Does anyone else need me to send it to you? No, I have it. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, we could come back to this agenda item when Ann Cannon is here, because okay. she told Hassan and I that she she went on a field trip to the locations that Marty suggested. Okay. And she did a follow up field trip uh, this afternoon to I think the ballpark and okay. Central Ninth. Cool. All right, so we'll go ahead and skip that, and then um, we'll talk about some new maps. Um, Neil, you had. Some new map, you had a new map or some new maps that you would like to share? Hey, Eric, yeah, just one. Um, well, let me see how I can remember how to do this. My screen. Yes, I think this is it. Um, so this is a slightly amended version of uh, a few of the maps we talked about last week. I sort of, when I was making this, I thought of it kind of as a compromise map compared to some with some of the issues that we talked about last week. Um, four changes. One is um, this, uh, the boundary between 4th and 5th goes up to 800 South. That was okay. in one of the maps I talked about. Um, second change, boundary from three and four goes to 100 south up here. Um, since there was some discussion about the appropriateness of this triangle going to district two, this map gives it to district one, which seemed to be, um, and my read of where the council was last week, or is it where this commission was last week, this seemed to be a more appropriate designation for this triangle. 
And then the final change number four is to bring district two over the I-15 and have it align to the tracks line um, and an old um, uh, freight cargo line um, near Central Ninth. Um, okay. It satisfies all the requirements and um, it allows us to sort of get where we need to be without utilizing this triangle for district one. Great. Um, any comments, questions from anybody else? I would just say congratulations on getting those numbers um, as close as you did. <laughs> That's so hard. <laughs> thank yeah. you, thank you. I think my only comment would just be with District 2 being moved that far east, um, that the way that the, the train tracks um, separates the west side of Salt Lake, which is, you know, the west side of the I-15, um, keeping like communities of interest together. I just don't think like third west, fourth west, fifth west, um, those folks just aren't, I don't think they consider themselves a community with the west side of the railroad tracks. And, and I don't think the other side of the railroad tracks would feel like that's the community of interest, like that we're um, connected. So I just don't know, that would be my concern about um, that and that's why I suggested, especially driving over like on 800 South, just to see like it's a very visual division between. Um, but yeah, that's just my my kind of feedback on that. I know it's a hard one, but thanks, Marty. Yeah, and, and I mean. Similarly, so right up on ninth, so I live on ninth and Washington, basically like right where the little divot is. Um, and like, I would not, yeah, I mean, like my, like it looks like it, yeah, like it cuts, but I like there's the VOA that's right on Brooklyn and third West. Um, and then I, I would be. Yeah, I kind of agree. Like, I think this is, I think this is good and the tracks are definitely a reasonable, uh, reasonable division. I just, I'm, I think more like the railroad tracks, like the big tracks would be more of that because I feel a lot more like personally where I'm at, I was like, right, just to the right behind Taco's Garay there is like, I feel a lot more connected with Fear Factory than I do with literally like the skate park on the other side of the freeway. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Interesting, interesting. Well, thank you for sharing that. Okay, that's all I got. Cool. Um, I ask you, sorry, so, so sorry. Neil, so did you move the the line with district one and two over to 200 south? Um, uh, let me. I, for some reason, I thought it was further north originally. So which, which, what lines are you talking? Um, so to the, we need to go left. I don't know who's in control. Okay. That's so me. this green bolded, is it on? Oh, uh, North, it looks like North Temple. Okay. Are you talking okay. about the one that's like right here? That the one yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Lost? I don't, so, I don't believe I moved any of those lines okay. in that neighborhood. Yeah. That looks fairly consistent with what the current map is in that area. You know, I've been thinking about this area and there's been so much development on North Temple. So. Right, the north side of North Temple would be District 1, and then the south side would be District 2. And I really feel like with communities of interest, um, if I sound obsessed, that's just like where my brain stays is keeping communities of interest together. But I really feel like moving that line further south 
um, cause I know we have to take away from district two cause the population's decreased. And I really feel like that jump maybe over to 200 South and then like where Fisher mansion is like that might be, um, that might make a little bit of sense too. But of course I haven't drawn a map yet and I will do this. So I will take my own advice, but <laughs> I was wondering if you just did that at all. I'm sorry, did you, do you have a question there? Did you, did you look at that line at all or think about moving it or anything? Okay. No, I didn't. I was mostly just focused on some of the other areas. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, my apologies for being late. I was trying to figure things out and then I'm going to jump off in a little bit, but Marty, I really like the way that you're thinking and proposing that, right? Communities of interest using some of those natural barriers, right? And so I, I 80 there, if we can figure out a way how to use that corridor to kind of, you know, have a, a more of a natural boundary, natural, we can call it freeway that, um, to have that, that separation, I, I think it would be great, especially because we continue to see this block between 600 North at Guadalupe neighborhood. Right, wow. continues to still be off like district two, and then we have district one, right? Um, so so I really appreciate that. Also, ask commissioner at large, can I make a nap? That's a question for later on. <laughs> yeah. Yes, absolutely. Good. Because, <laughs> yes. Uh, I've been talking to some folks and about this issue, especially one and two. So uh, maybe Marty, I don't know if maybe we join forces or do it just separately, but yeah. I was thinking the same thing. So yeah. Um, okay. Um, so I have a map that I want to present, but, um, can I skip ahead to the new business to present the letter 1st, because it creates context around my map. Okay, so, um, the other day, uh, East Liberty, uh, council East Liberty park organization sent a letter to all of us on behalf to the city. Um, asking us to consider the neighborhood, the community councils and, and whatnot. So, um, um, have we all had a chance to read that? Yes. Okay. All right. So. Entering in considering that I went back and. I took a, a blank city district map, like no, no existing boundaries or anything like that turned on the community councils and drew boundaries around those. So, um, let me go ahead and share that. Just want this one. Okay. All right. So, um, so the lines in green are those of the, the, the known community council boundaries. So I'll just kind of like zoom in and show you. So it's like, you've got like Morton Meadows here, Willow Place. Um, so one, there was, there was only one neighborhood that I had, there was only one council or one community council that I had to split. And that's Fair Park. Um, but I kept it entirely in two districts rather than three uh, where it currently is. So I actually cut out this little spot right up here um, that goes up to six north. So all of this would be in district five on the, the west side of the free east side of the freeway, excuse me. Um, but the rest of it would be entirely in, um, in district two. Um, and then district five sort of shifts a little bit. So it shifts to the down, it shifts up and to the downtown area. So it includes this central ninth ballpark. Central Liberty Wells, Liberty Wells. Downtown would consist of Central Ninth or Central City, Ninth and Ninth, East Liberty Park. Uh, the District One would come all the way over to Capitol Hill, or yeah, District One would come all the way over to Capitol Hill. So it would be split by the the river, the City Creek. Um, and then District Three would be Capitol Hill, part of Capitol Hill. This oh, this was the other one that I had to had to split. Um, was the Capitol Hill district into three and one, and then the greater avenues, the avenues, uh, Salt Lake, uh, East central university gardens, East central. And then coming down into district 6, all of the university. Would include 
Yale Crest, Foothill Sunny, Sunnyside East, Wasatch Hollow, Bonneville Hollow, Bonneville Hills, East Bench, and then essentially all of Sugar House, with the exception of right where that Walmart is, that off of 2300 East, would be in District 7. Hey, Eric, would you mind throwing the link to the sharing link to that map onto the chat? Absolutely. Um, I don't know how to hang on. I'm gonna have to stop sharing, I think. Oh, there it is. Okay. So, um, okay. So this was just take it. This was just with consideration of keeping the community councils as much intact as possible. You know, as you can see, some of the numbers are a little off. They all are within the five percent, um, but it so it does shift some of those a little bit. But it is um, um, sort of the best way that I could considering considering that letter. I'm, I appreciate your considering the letter. I do too. I think, um, however, district 1 would be. A lot for the city council person to manage. Um, I think the, the Capitol Hill, so I was on the Capitol Hill neighborhood council for. A couple years, and I think. Kind of the identity there is a little bit more in line with the avenues or at least the people involved. And that's another thing. I don't know how reflective that is of the broader community. Um, but I think there would be there are some very vocal, <laughs> um, forceful neighbors in this community, and I wouldn't want them to um overstep the issues of any community west of I-15, and I think that would that would just not be a fun situation for the city council person to be in. Um, that's kind of my opinion. Yeah, so if I were to throw these three into district, oh, let me actually, hang on. Um, if I were to throw these into district, Three. Um, let me do a block group. Select blocks. It's probably going to totally screw up the numbers. Um, into district three. So it it puts. So that's that was the issue that I had is is that it yeah. puts um, not enough people. It puts too many people in district three and not enough people in. Um, in district 1, I could the other option is. Um, this neighborhood. We could keep in district 1. Um, that still puts it. What about moving uh, that weird little. What a what a looping like the little. Um. The bit that says fair park moving that yeah. over to one. What does that do? Um, you mean this right here? The peach color, yeah. No, left. Here? Yeah, that little nook. If you moved that into one from two. Yeah, so I was I was trying to I was trying to keep Fair Park out of three districts where it currently is. I was trying to keep it into, I was trying to get it into one or two. And if I move this, it puts, now it puts it back into three districts. So that was my, and that would be. Yeah, I mean, that was. If you moved it all into issue? one? Huh? If you moved it all into district one, how does that make it into three? Right. This one, all this? Yeah. Oh, 
um, that adds that takes away 4,000 people from district 2 and adds. So, so there's, there's a lot of people that live in this area. <laughs> can we, what if. So, if that takes people from district 2 are the bound, where are the boundaries of district 2 that we can. So, here's actually something to maybe think about. I don't know if uh, downtown we can push down over to 900. West. And here's why, because, and we're thinking about, it feels awkward c coming over I-15, at least on that second south corridor. Yeah. There's a part of, um, so there's Euclid West, be uh, between 10th and West, and then there's this other little neighborhood, and they're putting a lot of apartments and development there. And that's its own area that doesn't have quite an identity yet <laughs> with the other rest of one and two. So we were to put some more folks on downtown to be able to adjust for um, for how many people either we need to lose on District 2. And I think I just got all confused with my numbers. But that little area, I feel like it doesn't have an identity that we can work with how we move them around either District 1, 2, or... Are you, talking this, are you talking this one here, 12th, between 3rd North, 12th, and 9th? Uh, I think it's uh, closer on the south side of South Temple. It's a tiny little right here. Oh. Yeah. This this little this area. corner. Yeah. Okay. And um Okay. Well, I couldn't I mean I can't put that in district one. So we would have to do some because that would that would cut off this. So I guess sorry, Marty, if I'm understanding what you're saying, right? So if we keep so oh, this, I, I keep moving my mouse like you can see it, but from Hanson over to 700 West and North Temple, if we move that to District 2, it being green, right? So that, that the community of interest stays there, along with that Guadalupe neighborhood, which is blue right now, and that 600 West and 700 North. So, and then we figure out then how do we adjust District 2 to then meet the numbers that we need to in other areas and we can play around with downtown or with the ballpark area? Yeah. But we don't need to do that right now. But right. yeah, that's still, it's tricky. It's hard. But it's, yeah, I mean, keeping neighborhoods of interest together is so vital to the west side. And mm -hmm. don't want to say that it's not as much of an issue in other parts of the city. Um, but I do know with um, the west side, I mean, it's just really, really. Um, important and I know the West Side Coalition was part of that letter. Um, I just don't know that this is the way it exists right now is really representing um, the communities of interest as well as it could, but also it's so hard to to play with it and get those numbers to work out. So. Um, Yeah. I'll throw it. So, Eric, you've got my little my tract highlighted, um, the the green one west of I fifteen yeah. right now. Yeah. Um, and I'll say, at least between six north up, quite a ways. I fifteen is pretty impenetrable. Um, so okay. crossing over that, um. It, it again, like Marty was saying with with Neil's map, it feels like a pretty solid boundary. Um, you can cross a block farther south, but um, it's yeah. It, so you I think so you think this should be in District Three? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, and that's where it is now. Um, okay. But it just it's not. I wouldn't say it's particularly connected to Rose Park. Um, in the built form. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll also chime in. I would have some concerns on this map or with how the, the lines are drawn downtown as the district four rep. I do think there are communities that are going to be broken up with State Street being the boundary. Um, the Harmons on the other side of State Street serves as the grocery store, for example, for the entire area. 
there's construction going on between 200 south and 300 south um, that are going to is going to tie the area even further together. Um, that does seem like that's breaking up a, a community that is already there. So you're talking here, this area. Uh, y yes, yes, that's okay. correct. Okay. But again, I'll I'll echo I'll echo Marty that yeah, this is very hard to do, right? <laughs> So, I mean, I could do something like this, where all of this is in. Um, yeah, see, this is this these stupid tracks. <laughs> I tried that earlier, and it really threw the numbers off. Yeah. And I did drive, by the way, because Marty went up and saw the new Rose Park School and up to Guadalupe and down to Victoria and the freeway. And that's an area <clears throat> that I used to teach school in, sort of. So I'm well aware of the fact that the people on the West in their communities are equally as connected as the people on the East. I don't think that's a different issue. It's the same. The people in communities are in communities because they have like interests and they care about each other. And it makes a difference to how the communities function. Um, and I too would want to keep Fair Park out of three districts if we could. But I feel like this area that you're in, Eric, to kind of piggyback off of what Anne's saying, because because community councils can be drawn by residents, so they don't necessarily have to uh, have discrete boundaries from each other. All of this overlap in this central part of the city makes um, makes this extra tricky because um, you don't like. If you're falling in two of these community councils, which one do you identify with? How does that align with your city council? Um, so I think I don't know that we can adhere uh, entirely to all of the boundaries just because mm -hmm. of there's so much overlap in the central part of town. So um, how does how does that? I mean, in terms of shifting things around, sort of like keeping this as the sort of ninth and ninth East Liberty, and then moving down to like the downtown district. So it's it's more lateral this way. There's some finagling I, I need to do with three and one, but I mean, for the most part, like that's. I would say that's that would be better uh, from from my perspective as as the district four rep. I do I am hesitant to break to to remove downtown from Central City. They they share a lot of similarities. So at least there you have um, that kind of symmetry where they're both in the same council district. Okay, and that still sort of keeps within the keeping. I mean, with the exception of this little piece that falls down because the block is so big. Um, like it's like this huge block. So it's either gonna be all of this in five or all of this, like all of this in four. So it's like, the, you know, um, and we can't, um, Ben, we can't split census blocks, right? Uh, the blocks are the smallest units that we can work with. Yeah, okay. So like, I can't come over here and be like, we want to draw this at 7th South. Anything south of 7th South is is um, in District 5, because this whole block goes all the way up to 4 South. So we can't split that, right? Okay. I didn't think that was the case, so that's why that's why this little notch is here. Because you either get all in 5 or all in 4. <laughs> yeah, that's just one of the, the limitations we get based on 
an unknown person drawing these lines and we're stuck with that. Yeah. But with that, we're still not, District 3 is still not, oh, and District 1. Yeah. We're still out of whack. Yeah, this one's much closer. District 3 is only 41 people out. So that one's, you know, we can probably figure that one out. But District 1 is definitely, and that's why I had this in District 1. But, you know, that doesn't make any sense because, like you said, it, like, it's separate. It's like a very, very physical barrier of of the freeway. Yeah. I mean, the other option is, um, like, so making this district three, um, no, that's too high. Splitting district two, sort of like this, basically. So making, with the exception of, ignore where the, where the block is covered, but essentially making that into District 2 and moving maybe this into District 1. But I will, I will rely on, on you West Siders to sort of <clears throat> determine if that is at all. It feels a little bit odd with the split of two coming in. I also am thinking that going back to what Marty's been saying in terms of that that community of interest, I'm 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 feeling the sense of of not in this meeting pulling them up and playing around with it and then meeting with some folks to see what it might be, keeping those west side neighborhood identities in mind. Yeah, and I think when we're talking about communities of interest, um What's different on the west side than the east side of town is people of color, socioeconomic status, um, is people who whose needs are going to be very different than, you know, some of with all the construction and the change that's happened in downtown. Um, our our interests aren't the same. It's a lot of working class folks. I mean, it's changing a lot on the west side, but. Um, as a whole is we have 114 languages in our elementary schools. We have like, mm -hmm. it's just different than, you know, and I've lived on the East bench. I've lived on the East side and, um. I haven't experienced any communities like I have on the West side of salt lake and so, um. So, yeah, I just think having anything on the other side of the freeway brought in over to the west side is two completely different um, priority areas for folks. It's like, it's just gonna be um, different ideas. And for that council member, it's just gonna be conflict all the time if we don't want to be gentrified over here, but downtown folks are, the rate of growth is happening and we don't want that to happen here. Like, it's just like, it's, I don't know, it's just, um, to me, it's just very, very different than other neighborhood experiences. Okay. Can we make a new district? I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's just <laughs> like, you know, it's... Yeah, the, the council does want to stick with seven districts. Okay. <laughs> it's more cheeky, but now we know. So, <laughs> so what? Also, oh, sorry, Ann. I was just wondering you now how how we've played quite a bit with trying to keep community councils within intact within a district and and yet we have a a an equality number to equalize the participation of community members. So I need to know from you, Marty, for instance, what your suggestion is as to how to 
better. Um, keep that diversified ethnicity that exists on the west side, which you're right, is quite different than on the far east side. Um, I think we need to to move at working at that because that seems to be where the problem is. Yeah, I mean, I think it's important to to hear the community councils um, on the west side. I also don't feel strongly that the community councils on the west side represent the community um, as a whole. I don't know that. Um, for me, I think making sure communities aren't split is more important to me than respecting the community council's existing lines. Um, and that may not be a popular um, opinion, especially with the community councils, but I think the intention is still really fair and um, and meaningful. It's just that some of these lines that exist, I think we can do it a little bit better. But of course, that's me with the ignorance of not playing with this. Mm -hmm. um, and I might realize like, oh, it, this is great. It's perfect, leave it alone. But um, I think keeping communities of interest together is, is, just, um, is just so, so important with the census and, with the like with voting and oh it's just so important to me so i don't know if daniel has a different view on on the community council's desires but i'm smiling because as you were saying that i'm like i'm just here to affirm marty because you're absolutely like that's my <laughs> job here yes marty you're right the fellow west sider because i mean i mean i've been at least to the ones around here and my neighbors are often not in those rooms what their interests are is often not in those rooms right and even um even how it how the language spoken to right so i would agree with you um 100 percent all right for um marty and and daniel when you start drawing maps maybe we can have whatever eric <laughs> lands on here with the kind of Community councils as a as a guide um, have that be one of the featured maps. So maybe this is also a note for Ben and um, Hassan and Taylor. But um, then you can copy it and then you can tweak those boundaries. So if this is close but not quite there, at least you're starting at a slightly different point than um, with the existing boundaries. Yeah. Yeah, somehow I need to add, like, so I'm still down 65 people in District 1. I moved, so I moved this down um, to the south side of the freeway. I think this is the freeway here. So I moved this all the way down to the freeway. Um, and this, this is, I think this is Redwood Road. No, yeah, Redwood Road. Over here. And that got me closer, but I'm still down about 65 people that I need to include in this district. In which district? District, district 1. District 1? Yeah. <clears throat> but, and you'd have to take it either, you have to take it from contiguous councils, uh, districts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So oh, yeah. it's either got to be this. <clears throat> Um, or this, so. Yeah, I mean, that one right there, that seems. Like, if that doesn't cause me any concern. This one here? Yeah. Like, I mean, I think that's like basically the fair park. But that that gives us that sort of puts the same issue that you know now it's still three districts unless there aren't people over here unless there aren't like I mean there are because there are sixteen hundred people that live in this but um, yeah and they're just 
unless the fair park really like so daniel and marty like so this district over here like do they consider themselves part of the fair park districts i guess that's the question is it because the isn't the freeways right here i i would argue i don't know marty what you think but at least with this 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 is the part of that Guadalupe neighborhood that passes east of the freeway. I would say that Guadalupe neighborhood is closer to a Rose Park identity than they are to District 3. So, I mean, even, you know, even in that split, I, I would separate them in that way. Yeah, I agree. I mean, and that's the whole thing is that little area we're talking about just very much fits with Fair Park and Rose Park yeah. more than they do with Poplar Grove and Glendale, but I understand it's like a, a dense area right there, so the numbers are tricky, but um well, let me let me do some let me do so some. When can, sorry, and I I was out of town for the first meeting, but when how do I get in queue in line to submit a map or to play around with it? <laughs> I don't know. Um, well, you can build any map that you want using district builder. Okay. Um, you just create an account and then there is a like Salt Lake city organization. Uh, okay. and then at that point, you just let me or Eric or Ben or Hassan know that you want to present your map and we'll add it to the okay. agenda. That's it. <laughs> I, I figured it was that simple. So, <laughs> um. So, okay, so question on this. So I, okay, so if I were to pull this into district two, so that like makes that, but then district four is down. Maybe I can pull some from district three. So I'll pull this into district two there. And then um, I need a little bit more for district four. Push uh, the boundary uh, from 900 east to uh, to 10th east, maybe. Yeah, I would, uh, yeah, I was trying to keep this together. Yeah, I don't know if you could get around not doing that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and so that here's you just signaled something I've been thinking. I'm like, I should bring it up. Around. So. I guess my, I'm interested as to why you wouldn't want to separate that. So we're trying to fit a puzzle with that particular, you know, area of the city. And I just, I'm wondering what are the other areas that we can consider maybe to, to share some of that split, right? If we're going to land and we're going to do a, a, a two district up here in the Northwest, you know, side of, of, of Salt Lake, can we share some of the load elsewhere? This is yeah, like, so like, I mean, so. In like oh. I can pull this this one block between four south and south temple into district four. All the numbers are fine at that point. So and in this one it seems like district four has gotten some fun and innovative uh changes. Um district three two has like that whole East Central University yeah. Garden would be a, mm -hmm. an addition. Yeah. Um to the current boundaries of district three and you know i mean and this is this is one of those things that i've i've sort of considered as i've thought about you know when i was making this sort of when i like drew the map that first map that i had where i was just like not considering anything um like to me i bet if you talk to these people they would either align with district six or district three less so than district four i don't think they consider themselves downtown I think my, I would agree with that. I've worked yeah. with the people in that area. I would say in my very unprofessional opinion, 700 East is probably that boundary that separates yeah. downtown. Mm -hmm. And it's weird how it's weird how like the difference is. So I used to live on 30. It's like right here and. I wasn't in the avenues. I was at the base of the Cathedral of the Madeline, which is the start of the avenues, and did not consider myself part of that neighborhood. It was just very distinct how, like, South Temple was that barrier. 
I would I would agree with that. Having we might have been neighbors, having lived right across from Einstein Bagels, you know, and then also in the, the avenues. I yeah. guess I'm also thinking in terms of the district representatives, right? So they may not see themselves as part of downtown, but I also don't see that it's much of a big difference when we're thinking about a council person trying to represent that that folks in the ways in which we saw maybe the tension yeah. between the west side and Capitol yeah. Hill. Right. Okay. So um so this is in the the packet i haven't like the label or the the link is still the same you guys can take a look at this and tinker around the edges um you know this still keeps the idea that fair park is in two districts so it moves moves district two all the way out to six or fifth fifth west um keeps capitol hill in district three um downtown is a little more contiguous with some job you know some jogging up and down here trying to maintain the boundaries of those community councils as much as possible and then the same thing for the east side with the exception of this one little neighborhood here that population wise i just couldn't get into district seven because it's already pretty high no yeah. And I would, and I, I mean, having driven around there, I think I would feel that like these neighborhoods here probably rely more with the East Bench than they do with Sugar House anyway. I don't know that they would, I don't know that like T Cactus and Tropicals would consider itself Sugar House. Yeah, I would agree with that. Like, I wouldn't consider that Sugar House if I was describing it. I don't yeah. Know what to call it though, but not Sugar House. Uh, in this map that you have, have you uh, made the suggestion of in Wasatch Hollow? Um, over here, you've cut us off at what? Thirteenth East. And you've gone to fifteenth. Uh, 1700 South. Yes, 1700 South, and, and this is 1500 East to 13. This is right here, yeah. Right. So this now, is all part of District 6. So 13th East, basically 13th East over would be District Okay, 6. now, I would want to, now this, do we need any more in District 5? No. Because no, this we're, we're right in, we're right, like we're really good with District 5. Because I would still like us to have that 15th and 13th in District 5. Uh, I think it helps us in District 6 have a better connection with. Um, District four, five, 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 five. So that that would go from thirteenth to fifteenth in district five. Thirteenth South, which was the suggestion I made last. Like this block here. Uh, is that fifteenth? Uh, yeah, the 15th is right here. Yes, 15th to 13th. That would be in block. Um, that puts you that puts you too low. That put that puts district six with too few people. If you're going, that. what is this boundary? So 13th east is here. 17th south is here, and then 13th south is here. But you've included us just to 15th East, not to 17th East. Well, you did. So the whole Wasatch Hollow, which is which is here. No, no. It's all entirely in District 6. Right. And I'm wanting to shift as we were before. Having part of Wasatch Hollow in District 5. Well, 
Yeah, and I can't, I, I mean, if I just do this, like you have, you don't have enough people. Like this, this, I need, I need a, I need almost 800 in, more people. In this map that we're yeah. looking at. Right. And that also sort of violates the, the, the sort of request that we got from East Liberty Park which was basically like keep the community councils together as much as possible in the same district. So that's why Wasatch Hollow is entirely in its own district. And, and you know, like that's Maybe. what I tried to do is basically keep those community councils solitarily in a single district as much as possible. Mm -hmm. This one could just be one option that we present where we say we received this letter from the community councils. We tried to, you know, keep them together as best as possible with the recognition in some places, the communities of interest that we see it in, as community members. Maybe we had to, you know, divide the community council a bit and it doesn't have to reflect everything perfectly because. Mm -hmm. These are options we're presenting to the city council, like they get right. to decide in the end. So, um, I think, yeah. <coughs> Ooh, what is this? This is just the block group <laughs> split. <laughs> um, so the, one of the evaluation tools. So if you click on evaluate on a map, you get equal population. So it gives you your percentage breakdown for each district. Uh, off of the, the magical 28 531 number. Um, so it's, we've got 0. 0.6, negative 0. 0.1, 1. 1.6. So District 4 is actually down, but I think that's okay given that District 4 most, most definitely will grow in the next 10 years. <laughs> so, um, and then District 5 down 1%. Again, I think that's okay. District 6, um, and then with District 7 um, having the highest closest to the 5%. And then you can also look at the continuity. So it's basically, are the boundaries contiguous? There are no pieces in other boundaries that are separated. Um, competitive doesn't matter because it's nonpartisan. And then you've got your compactness rating. So how tight are the boundaries? And then you'll notice some of these ones on the edges are just not at all because those are the boundaries. <laughs> Like you can't, you can't like, you know, so it's factoring in this, these things and like this, where it's like, there's like, this is, this is whatever this is, this is stupid. <laughs> so like whatever, whatever is happening here that like Salt Lake City at some point decided that Brickyard needed to be part of Salt Lake is, is, is weird, but it's either not, our job, or discuss, not our job to, to, to figure that out. <laughs> And then um, majority minority co coalition. Uh, so district one and two both have that majority minority coalition and you can sort of run over this. It's like, so it's 47% Hispanic in district two and 45% Hispanic in district one. And then if you add up all of the others, you get more than 50%. And then you can kind of see the rest of them. It's like district three, very white, district four, very white, District five, really white. District six, really white. District seven, really white. <laughs> and then the last thing is, is this is just the those block groups. So you can you can select by at the block level, but at the block group level. And some like some maps actually you have to consider the block groups. I don't know that we necessarily do. It's not something that we have to necessarily consider, but the lower the number on this, the better. So that's what those are. Okay. Any any more questions? How will we um, be? You say we'll be able to look at this map, or do we need to? Is this? Um, Ben, is the map that we looked at uh, earlier today any any better than this one in equality or comments, or is it close to, or should it even be considered? 
So you're referring to Neil's updated map that he shared earlier in the meeting. I see it. I wasn't able to find my way there. Yep. And so, um, so now I, we've graduated to Eric's map, right? That he's been playing with before us. Right. I, I, I would echo what Mallory said that I think these are all options mm -hmm. and the council would welcome multiple maps from the commission, it, especially in light of the discussion where one of the maps treats community councils in a more uniform way, trying to keep them within single council districts and the other maps don't prioritize that. Instead, they prioritize other boundary changes. That's fine. I think having both as recommendations to the council is helpful as long as we give them and the public the context about why the different priorities resulted in those different boundaries. Now, are those maps that you're just talking about, are we going to be able to see them between now and our next meeting, if there is a next meeting? So I didn't see a link to Eric's uh, map, but if if he can send us a link, we can share that with everyone, as well as remind everyone how to copy a map. So you can use that as a starting point instead of the current council district boundaries as a starting point. That's a pretty handy shortcut. Right. And there, there's two meetings left. Uh, Hassan informed me that based on the doodle poll results, next Wednesday evening was when most commissioners were available. So we currently have a meeting for next Wednesday and then the last meeting, if needed, next Thursday. Okay. But I surely would like to have the maps of consideration for community councils and the map that I think Neil had earlier. Mm -hmm. And is there any need to share the one I made with you today? based on what discussion we have already had. I, I don't think so, since you raised the, the Wasatch Hollow being split between two districts versus in one district, mm -hmm. uh, since that was the primary change that you were working on. I, I do think it would be helpful for Hassan and I to take all the maps that have been discussed, and we've been adding those into the unfinished business section of the agenda, kind of making a list of everything. But we can take all of those maps, uh, put them in a list with links to District Builder for each one. Mm -hmm. So it's all in one place for the commissioners and you don't have to bounce back and forth between agendas and different emails. That would be that would great. Be, yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Yeah, so Eric, this is Marty. I'm um, sorry I'm eating, so I turned my camera off. Um, okay. I mean, at some point, like at our last meeting, will do you foresee, or maybe to all the commissioners, that will maybe, I don't know, like vote on these are our top three, five, whatever number we come to that we think represent, like each has, you know, for those strongest, like this represents the community councils desires this one we feel you know represents the most equitable based on the percentages and is that what everyone's kind of thinking like i guess yeah, I'm, i think i was have like a voting night or something yeah i was thinking on the 7th which is which was sort of our scheduled last meeting that we would have the the maps and um we would vote but i'm i'm kind of like, Ben, how soon do you think you can get that list together of of maps that we can start to review, like, so we can kind of 
have that ready to go. Like I can come in with my top three favorites based off of, you know, all the maps that have been submitted. I'll take some time and go through it and then be ready to look at them. Like, Oh, we can get that to you tomorrow. Okay. That would be great. Um, Cause I think that would be, I think Marty, I think that's what we should do is I think between now and next Thursday with our, and we can, we can discuss, you said Wednesday, right? Was the, so, uh, so next Wednesday is our sort of like final hash out meeting and then we can vote on Thursday. Yeah, and I think um, you can expect on Wednesday um, that we'll have a, a west side map that Daniel and I will get together and maybe Eric Lopez and um, kind of work through some of those, see if we can come up with anything you know, it may not be any different, but <laughs> we'll give it a go. Okay. Yeah. If possible, I'd love if there could be some kind of absentee voting system because, um, as I said last week, I will not be able to make next week's meeting. On Wednesday either? Uh, I am flying to Denver on Wednesday night and I will be there until Saturday, unfortunately. Would you be able to, um, if it was like in an email format, Neil, like give a, and I don't even know if that's allowed, but like a, here's what I think are the strongest three or something. Yeah. Probably you have no access to email. Um, I, yeah, I could probably try do something over email, especially if I could get the material early or the ballot or however we want yeah. to do this. Um, yeah, I have no problem sort of working around it. It's just going to be hard for me to actually get on a meeting. Well, I think what I think, um, I, I mean, I like, I'll sort of ask the com the commission if we think it's okay. But if you want to sort of like send us your top three, we'll include those with the votes on Thursday. So I'll just add those to the totals of whatever votes come in for those maps. And if, you know, your maps get the three that you like get chosen, you know, we'll just add those to your thing. If if you're the only person that votes to them, then you have three maps that don't get chosen. <laughs> and I mean, I would say that, that I'm fine with that as a, I think my just froze. Oh, here you are. There we are. Okay. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I froze. I can tell everybody is in weird poses. <laughs> um, yeah, so like, I mean, if if the rest of the commission is okay accepting his vote by email in absentia, I think, I think we're good with that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and what is it? District seven who hasn't made the last couple meetings? Is that who? Daya, which district are you with again? Um, I'm not technically with the district. Oh, okay. You're in at large or. Okay. You're, you're correct, Marty. Our district 7 representative hasn't been able to join us the last 2 meetings. Uh, Elizabeth Mori, she was here for the 1st meeting. Okay. That would be nice to get her. <clears throat> her vote too, right? I wonder. If we can work if. We're able to communicate with her maybe before next week. Yeah, we've been sending her the links to the recordings as well as all the materials for the packet. So we're, we're trying to keep her in the loop. Um, I, I know her job in the medical field is a bit unpredictable. Got it. <clears throat> so then we could open it up to her to vote the same way Neil would be voting. Um, just so she can have her 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 input, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Great. I wonder. We're wondering what the commission's thoughts would be towards the idea of having a stipulation that you can't vote for your own maps. That might help make <laughs> allow us to come to a consensus. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know though, right? Because I mean, each of us is going to have a map potentially that like is representing our district really well, right? So I really don't think that it matters who made the map. 
Yeah. If the map has the qualifications that meet as many needs as it can, it really doesn't matter who made it. We're appreciative think, of those efforts. Yeah, I think too, if maybe it's more than a ballot, but if you say, you know, I vote for this one because it sticks the community councils together, or I vote for this one because it maintains the current boundaries, then we can also consider that if we do make tweaks while you're wherever you're going to be. Um, and so, you know, we can, we can keep that in mind. So we're not just like throwing away your vote. If there's some map that's similar um, and follows the same principles, then hopefully um, we can kind of keep representing your intent a little yeah. bit. And do we um, um, sort of a logistics question about the uh, voting? Are we going to say that any map that has five votes gets sent to the com sent sent to the council, or like at least five votes? I don't know. I'm also wondering though, and kind of it goes with that is like how many maps is too many? So like Ben, would you say like don't do more than five or 10, no issues. Like, I, cause I mean, if it's like, they will welcome 10 maps, like then that makes it, we have a lot more flexibility. I don't know that we'll have 10 distinct enough maps, really, like right. maybe. So I did ask the council that exact question and they said, we don't want to limit the commission. So okay. they are deferring to you all to say, how many maps are worth the council's consideration? So I don't have an answer for you other than it's, it's, it's up to this group to decide. Hey, um, they get two weeks to think through how, right? They get like two or three weeks. Cause if we gave them a list of 10, knowing how long it's taken us to walk through the yeah. six or, you know, seven, I think we need to consider that as well. So the council will have from uh, the night of April 7th, when you make your decision until May 10th, that is the state law deadline for the council to vote on a map. So about okay. four weeks. Okay. Um, is there any way, so going back to Marty's point about like indistinguishable maps, like, is there any way for the GIS department to go and like pull all of the, the shape files for all of these and be like, these four maps are are virtually identical. Hmm. So I'll have to circle back with our GIS team. We okay. did have an early discussion uh, internally about the possibility of taking all the maps that have been created in District Builder and identifying commonalities, like you know, half the maps tend to move this boundary in this way. Right. Okay. Um, so. I, I'm not that tech savvy to say yes, okay. but I do know who is. So let me okay. talk to him and get back to you. So I know it is technically possible as someone who did GIS for 10 years, like I know it is technically possible to do that, but um, you know, whether the, the time and effort is worth it, but yeah, like, I think that would be really helpful uh, maybe to have like a difference map. You know, like we have all of these boundaries and it's like, this is in district four, this is in district three, this, you know, sort of, so we can kind of see those differences um, among all the maps that have been submitted. Okay. Yeah, and it would be really interesting to be like, none of us made this map, but like all these other people yeah. aligned and had this map, like, mm -hmm. it, like, and so we're sharing it with you because clearly interested people you know, yeah, for sure. Into it. How much time uh, in that month's time before the council makes its decision? Uh, is that when there's the public comment time? Correct. Uh, we tentatively scheduled two public hearings for the council about the redistricting maps for the public to give comment. Uh, we're looking at April 19th and May 3rd. And of course, you, anyone can give comment to the council at any time 
uh, through other communication channels, email, phone, social media, et cetera. Should we be, should we plan as commissioners to attend? And I don't know if you all got it in the mail, but the city sent out a really nice um, trifold in English and Spanish about the redistricting work. So should we be prepared to attend those city council meetings or will there at least the chairs or what's the guidance there? So for presenting the, the recommended maps to the council, uh, the typical process for board recommendations would be for the chair and or vice chair to help present. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if the, the Eric's are available on uh, April 12th or 19th. Uh, if not, you know, maybe we look at other commissioners uh, being available. But either way, it's my job as staff to communicate your thinking and your final maps to the council. So what, what time would that be? So the council holds work sessions between 2 p.m. and 6 p.m. on Tuesdays. So right. I, I can't give you a more specific time yet um, because of all the different items on the agenda. Uh, but that four hour window is for sure. Okay. Um, I'm available on the 12th. I would just have to move. I have a one meeting that it's sort of a standing meeting that I would just need to miss and which is fine um same with the 19th so i can i have that time available that i can i can be away from work if i need to be so you can count on me being available for either of those um if all right if Eric Wilkins great. Is great now it seems to me the more maps we have that are presented to the public the more confusion <laughs> we will uh in invite yeah <laughs> for sure <laughs> um then um so i had a thought i had a thought um and it was kind of around that idea um it'll come to me anyway it was it was very similar to what ann was thinking um about the confusion and i don't remember what it was I will remember, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> well, as commissioners, do we want like does do people have like a off the top of their head number that they think is like a good number to to present, like as a goal? I mean, it could be you know flexible. I was I was thinking five. I would I was too. Thinking. Yeah. I would think that that's a broad enough. If we have five maps that have some distinct difference from each other, mm -hmm. um, but but many similarities as well. Yeah. Yeah. Mallory, Neil, what do you think? Five maps sounds fine to me. I have no problem with five. Yeah, I was kind of going between three and five, and in my head, three are one's the community council, one's one of Eric's wild, we don't have boundaries maps. <laughs> one is, um, and then probably a couple are, you know, more minor shifts um, with explanations. That's kind of how my brain has broken it up. So, what do you what do you think, Daya? Um, I think. Five or fewer, depending on how our votes fall. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense, because yeah. it's bold to assume that we'll vote on five different maps, kind of equally. True. True. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I think if we sort of set the like, you can only vote for five maps type of thing. I think that sort of that is a limit is a good idea. Yeah. Um. I remember Ben. Public comment last time. Um. Like how. How contentious was this process for the city council after the commission de delivered their maps? So last time it was more complicated because it was not only council districts, but also school districts. Oh, okay. So this time it is theoretically, <laughs> it is simpler. Okay. Uh, that, that being said, 
last time the council did make some tweaks the night of adoption. So it, it's entirely possible that it's kind of a moving target until it's not. Okay. Uh, and, and I think that is possible this time, um, especially as more public comment comes in. Mm -hmm. One of the things I think is true this go around like it was 10 years ago is the public is not giving comment to the commission because mm -hmm. they're almost waiting to see the recommended maps and then they engage once they've been recommended. Uh, okay. I think that dynamic is going to happen again. So okay. it partly depends on how much comment the council gets once there are maps for people to react to instead okay. of creating their own map. Got it. Um, now, is this and the, the sort of final vote, is this going to be, does the mayor have any involvement in this or is she like sort of out of this process of the council votes and she sort of just like ratifies it as the executive? So redistricting is an entirely legislative process. Okay. The council is fully in control. Uh, the mayor does not get a vote or a veto on this. She okay. can, of course, as anyone can, share her comments with the council. Uh -huh. uh, and I imagine she'll have thoughts to share. Okay. Um, this might be something that I missed on District Builder, but can we see where the school districts are on that? No, that isn't one of the options. Is that something you can add? Uh, we can look at adding that as a, another reference layer, like the current council district boundaries and the community council boundaries. Yeah, yeah. So let me follow up with our, our mapping folks and see if they can add that. Great. Thank you. And also, thank you for changing the colors. Like the green is a lot easier to see. Right? <laughs> I, did not pick, like, I did not pick the green, but I, I concur. It's an yeah. improvement. <laughs> I mean, it makes it hard for District 1, like if we could change District 1's color to sort of like a pink color or something like that would make it a little easier. But yeah, like, I mean, other than that, like that beigey or that like bluey gray color was just awful. <laughs> it blended in with literally every color. <laughs> Somehow it was indistinguishable from every other color on the map. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, can you explain? I don't know what this CHVCH redistricting maps is. I don't know what that item, I don't know what that means on the agenda. Oh, sorry. That is a. Uh... That is government jargon. That is a chair slash vice chair as an acronym. Okay. Uh, we will spell that out. Okay. In, in the next agenda. Sorry. Okay. That that's our internal shorthand. Okay. Got it. I was just like I was like, yeah. <laughs> um. So I posted. So I did um, one other map. Um, I made the. So I added the minimal changes map, um, which just that one that we talked about last week, I just like, I drew it up real quick, um, which moves the district five boundary over up a little bit and the district four boundary east a little bit. Um, so that's one of the ones that's probably on the sheet. Um, and then I added the Anne's changes to the minimal changes map. So her, what, what did she call it? The politely compact with minimal changes. <laughs> so I added both of those into my district builder. Um, so those should be available on this uh, sheet. This you, is guys, good. Like, you guys as a city can pull those in, right? Even if we don't share them. Yeah, so the, the spreadsheet that uh, is updated for each of the meetings, mm -hmm. it's a link to every map that anyone has made in District okay. Build. Okay. Is there a way to identify within that spreadsheet the maps that we have considered as a commission? 
So those are the ones we're adding and listing on the agenda under unfinished business. So we've been building that list for every map the commission talks about. And that'll okay. also be the list that we're emailing to all of you tomorrow with the links to district builder. So you can have all of them in one place. Awesome. Um, okay. Back up here to the agenda. Da, 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 da. Um, okay. So the, um, so that looks that does the pending and unfinished business. The, we've talked about the redistricting letter, the spreadsheet of district builders submitted between March 21st and March 28th. Um, where is that? Is, is that in the packet? It is. So if you are, if you are on line at the agenda and so let me screen share this so everyone can okay. see it together. It's just easier. Oh, I don't think I have permission to share right now. Taylor, can you upgrade me? Sweet. All right. Can everyone see my my yeah. web browser? So when you go to the the agenda website, which is slcprimegov.com forward slash public forward slash portal, you scroll down and then you can see here is the redistricting commission. We're currently live. And there are three options. You can do an HTML agenda, just the agenda PDF or the full packet as a PDF. It's often helpful, I've heard, to do the HTML agenda. So I click on that one. Okay. It opens the agenda. And for each agenda item, you can see it's highlighted in blue as I move between the items. Uh -huh. So you click, for example, new business. If I click on it, it then brings the items available for download in that section. And here's the spreadsheet. If you don't like this format, you can just download everything in one PDF. Okay. okay. So if I go back to the main screen here, if you click on packet, it then starts a download, which has all of the attachments instead of them separated out by individual agenda items. Okay. And that would be a PDF? Correct. So if I open this PDF, it's 18 pages and it has every one of the attachments that you would otherwise individually click and individually download. Cool. And so you're okay. So you're going to send us a list of all of the unfinished business maps, or you're going to send us a list of all of the maps. The former. I'm going to send okay. you a list of all the unfinished business maps that the commission okay. has discussed. Okay. We will include uh, Neil's new map from today. Okay. And then Eric, if you can email Hassan and I a link to the map that you were showing and working on today, we'll add that as well. Already done. Okay. Already emailed. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then we can go back, like, so if I wanted to see all of the maps that have been submitted by everybody, I could go back to previous, the previous meetings and open up that same spreadsheet and see, like, all of the maps. Because I remember, like, on the first week, there were, or the first or second week, there was a whole bunch of public maps that had been shared. You know, like, Alex, uh, Alejandro had had some, and, and uh, Darren had submitted some. Um, so it was like, so I like wanted to go back and see what everybody was looking at to, you know, see what our public are saying. <laughs> I, I do think there may be an increase, uh, in the number of maps since the mailer that Marty referenced went out, um, okay. that was sent to every household in the city. So I think it was like 90,000 addresses. Okay. 
Well, that should inform us uh, for each particular area. Yeah. That what the people in each of our communities that we're representing, uh, how their thinking is related to what we think it is. For sure. Do on the spreadsheet, I think I tried to ask this in the first meeting and didn't do a good job, but on the spreadsheet, um, do you have to push validate or whatever the check function is, or is it because I've got like six maps that are all basically the existing city council boundaries that I haven't done much to. And so I'm wondering if all of those would show up or if you have to go push the you know, finalize, check this, and then it would show up in the spreadsheet. Because if people are just kind of poking around and aren't committed, <laughs> yeah. um, I don't know how helpful that will be. That is one of the shortcomings of District Builder is any map that's created is then given its own link and is then on that spreadsheet. So you don't actually know until you click the link and look at it and you're like, oh, this is just the same thing that we already have for our current council boundaries with like one change. Yeah. So it is a mix. It is maps that people have, you know, spent hours on and maps that someone created and tinkered with for five minutes and then stopped and moved on to a different map it, it, and everything in between. I would ask uh, in the material that we're going to be able to be have available the spreadsheet i didn't know how to get it in one piece so we can do that for the two meetings next week we thought it would be helpful to batch the maps on a weekly basis so if you just wanted to see what was new that's what was in front of you Right. But since your final two meetings are next week, we can combine all of those into one spreadsheet. That'd be very great. Yeah. Right. But now, the, the spreadsheet to me, it only went so far in distance side to side. I didn't get all of the information about connectivity, compactness, population. I had to print that separate from the other side which had the names and the addresses and so is any way to have that come all together in one or not? so that's a that's a limitation where the the digital version of the spreadsheet is basically an 11 by 17 hard copy size Right. So if you want that hard copy, we can print 11 by 17s and provide those to you. I would like that. Uh, we can only, do that for you, Anne. It, only in the spreadsheet uh, with all the maps on it. I don't need that for everything. Mm -hmm. Okay. I've got your request. Thank you. Okay, um, go back. Okay, so um, that wraps up everything on the agenda. Are there, is there anything else that we need to discuss, want to discuss, concerns, comments, questions, heresy? <laughs> <laughs> well, I certainly had a hard time getting to this meeting. I started five minutes early and was 10 minutes late, at least. So I don't guess I understand that link that I touch. It doesn't bring me directly to the meeting. I mean, it didn't. So I the, guess it just- The, pan, the join as panelist email? Right. Yeah. Yeah, like I had to fill in my name and email address on it and then, but then like, you can't join until um, the host until Taylor has started the, the meeting. Right, so, and I waited a long time with it at that address and, and I never appeared. I don't 
I don't think it automatically refreshes. I think you have to click refresh on it um, on the page in order to get the button to show up. Thanks. You're correct, Eric. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'll keep trying. So, I think that's probably because I had I had a similar issue where I was like sitting here and it was waiting and then I was like, oh maybe I refreshed and then the button showed up. So I I think um, yeah so. Yeah, and WebEx is notorious for causing people to be late to meetings. <laughs> <laughs> well, I apologize. That's why nobody uses it? Because <laughs> we used it in my last job, and people always were like, "It just took me ten minutes to get on." Like, so, yeah, it's just it's a little tricky that way. Okay. Um, Hearing nothing else. Um, Can I throw in one more note before we adjourn early? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I'm, Neil, if there's anything that you want to absolutely make sure is represented when you're not here um, in your votes, like, I don't know, don't move the district four boundary to this road. Um, would you make sure to send that to Ben or Hassan or someone so that we don't just kind of upset the apple cart entirely without you being here. Absolutely, Mallory. Thanks for thanks for thinking of me. I, I'll be happy to, especially when I see the maps that we're going to be talking about. Um, I really liked your idea of sort of providing a because statement, um, and, and I'll be sure to to take advantage of that and sort of explain why the the maps that I am sort of gravitating towards why I care for them or why I don't. Um, something that we, so before we adjourn, as you're thinking about maps, something that, that so um, at work we do, we do this uh, scrum technology, we're scrum frameworks as we're doing project management. And one of the things that we, um, that we do is sort of voting and you can probably, you can kind of do it yourself is rank anything on a like one to five scale like we do a we do like a hand one two three and you put up like how many fingers like what your strength of this particular project is or this particular task and as you're going through the maps sort of do that to yourself like where would you put this on a scale of one to five you know like one big this is garbage and should not even be considered to five this is the best map ever you know and somewhere in between Type of things and just kind of rank those as you're as you're going through the different maps and um, that'll help you because as you go through if you go and look through all of them you know we've got dozens of maps at this point that have been submitted if you wanted to look at all of them um, and even even our maps we've got you know six or seven or eight now so it's like you're gonna be hard to remember it's like oh did I like this one or did I like this one did I like this one better than this one and that type of thing and just and I think it kind of helps you with with as you're gauging your your interest in the map at that particular time, thinking about it's like, oh, this is good. And then you can go back and be like, okay, eliminate all my ones. Now I'm gonna go look at everything else and and you know, see where if I gauge them the same versus you know, the the second go around. I think that will be helpful. Cool. Awesome. All right. Motion to adjourn. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone. Thank Bye. you. See you on Wednesday. Thank you. Okay. Good luck with your travels, Neil. <laughs> okay.